This is an apple. You can look at it from the right, you can look at it from the left. It doesn't change the fact that this is still an apple. But you, what you may not know is that this apple has so much story behind it. Throughout human history, there are three apples that have changed the course of humanity. Adam's apple, Newton's apple, and Steve Jobs' apple. <laughs> My dream is to become the world's fourth apple. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Vincent's apple, my apple. Why apple, you might ask? There are approximately 1,755 different types of edible fruit, but there's only one fruit that has been said to have the ability to keep the doctor away. Apples. <laughs> Why is that? An apple a day keeps the doctor away is a saying that has existed through generations not only in the Western culture, but also in the Eastern culture. The Mandarin version goes like this. What was the reason for this adage to exist and remain in the existence until now? In this day, in this day and age, it is so easy for us to lose sight of the past and the wisdom of the generations before us, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reconnect with this old adage. Apples have the highest concentration and the widest spectrum of phenolic antioxidants. Phenolics are a group of chemical compounds that are naturally occurring in plants. They are regarded as the holy grail of antioxidant because of their superior ability in catching and neutralizing free radicals. Free radicals are toxic compounds that are constantly on the lookout to steal electrons from our cells. Once our cells are being robbed of their electrons, they become unstable and then turn into free radicals themselves. This actually is very devastating because it leads to a phenomenon known as oxidative chain reaction, much like a domino effect. Oxidation causes cellular damage and may lead to cellular inflammations and many other diseases, including cancers. Phenolic antioxidants protect our cells by donating electrons to stabilize free radicals, putting a stop to this devastating domino effect. Sounds good so far. However, phenolic antioxidants are hard to get at. For many, many years, antioxidants have either been synthetically created through a chemical process or extracted using chemicals such as methanol, ethanol, acetone, or ether. These methods resulted in the final product with the very, very low absorption rate. The absorption rate of these products from these methodologies is only 3 to 5%. This is due to the fact that these chemically extracted products are not compatible with our biological system. My research led me to the invention of a breakthrough technology in the 80 years of antioxidant history. For the very first time, I extracted an activated phenolic antioxidant using only water. I invented this technology based on a process called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a naturally occurring process in our digestive system. In principle, it is the breaking down of substances using water. By mimicking hydrolysis, I found a way to manipulate the behavior of water molecules and use them to extract and activate phenolic antioxidants. Using my technology, phenolic antioxidants can now be absorbed in our body not 3%, not 5%, not 30%, but a whopping 90%. So yes, this is my dream, to become the fourth apple that changes the course of humanity. I know, it sounds weird, it sounds unusual, and it sounds like a strange dream. 
So let's back up a little bit. Let me share with you the reason why I wanted to become a scientist. My parents taught me from a very young age that it is important to always grow in life and help make a difference. This is the reason why I wanted to become a scientist. I take it as my duty to use what I know and my expertise to contribute to the world. Inventing a technology was a start, but it almost does not mean anything unless I can translate it into practical outcomes that can improve the lives and well-being of people everywhere. It hasn't always been easy. Going against the normal practices have, that have been in place for over eight decades was very challenging. The technical and scientific challenges were to be expected. But little did I know, the most challenging aspect has been people. I personally believe that every person that you cross paths with in life teaches you a lesson. There are those who are so inspiring and you want to be like them. Even the ones who are not so good actually teaches you a lesson. You learn not to be like them. <laughs> Along my journey, I face a lot of people who try to influence me and influence who I am. Sure, sometimes it's good, but it can also be bad. People always talk about the best advice they have ever been given. Today, for a change, I want to talk about the worst advice I have ever been given. Once upon a time, there was a researcher, young researcher called Finson. A senior academic in his university called him into his office and then proceeded to give him his advice. That person was me. He sat me down and he told me, Finson, if you want to succeed, you have to be less like you. You can't be too outspoken. Basically, you have to be less like you. Being raised in Indonesian, my reaction was very Indonesian. Let me explain. One thing that Indonesians are not very good at is saying no. This inability to say no actually makes us so very creative. We say, maybe, later, tomorrow, we nod, we smile, anything but to say no. So I nodded, and I sort of kind of held back my tears. I used to commute for four hours from where I live to my lab. It means that I had a lot of time to myself. Actually, looking back, those self-reflecting moments have been so instrumental in shaping who I am today. Anyway, the commute on that day was horrible. I was very shocked by that conversation because here I was trying to achieve my dream, trying to make a difference in this world, and then I was just told that being who I was was not the way to succeed. I was thinking, what was going to become of me? Then I decided I was going to turn this horrible, horrible advice into the best advice I've ever been given. I have a dream, and I owe it to myself to see it through. If people like me, and I hope they do, it's good. But if they don't, it's okay. Because guess what? I like me. <laughs> I realize that if you have a dream and a passion to change the world and make it a better place, or in my case, a healthier place, I have to be prepared to be different. Being the same isn't going to get me anywhere. I was no longer willing to be molded and shaped into doing something that was not my passion. Be bold, be brave, and be you. Because being yourself is what is needed to change the world. That was what I told myself. I spoke to my mom about it, and she told me something that was so profound. She said that, don't be angry or upset if people don't understand your journey. It's not their job to understand it. As long as you understand it, that's the most important thing. When I graduated, I was the youngest PhD holder in my field in the world. I invented a world's first technology to naturally extract and activate phenolic antioxidants without the use of any chemical solvents. 
they are the most potent dietary antioxidant in the world. I was 25 at that time, and I was young and naive, and I thought that, wow, having created this world's first technology, I was so ready to change the world. What I didn't know, having the world's first technology was only exciting for approximately three seconds. Because then I realized, nobody has ever done this before. No manufacturer could actually do my process. No existing manufacturing process could do what I want, what my technology would want to perform. This is when I realized that just dreaming is not enough. You have to wake up and take a shower and fight for your dream. I literally had to build and create a series of manufacturing processes to perform my technology. Which brings us back to my apple, my an apple a day. I successfully transformed my research into a tangible product that people can benefit from. I founded Renovatio. That's how I call my company. It means new life in Latin. Many people thought it wasn't the smartest idea. Actually, that's not what it's here. Let me redo this sentence. Many people said it was a stupid idea to choose a name that most people can't pronounce, let alone spell. And they were kind of right. In the first several months of our existence, people thought that we were either a construction company or interior designer firm. <laughs> However, I was being stubborn. Can you see the pattern here? <laughs> but for a good reason. The name Renovatio serves as a reminder for me as to why I began this journey. It is easy to remember and be true to yourself when you start out, but I have heard so many stories where people get confused and they lost their original vision when money and success come into play. I named my company Renovatio to remind me of that sincere purpose, which is to give people a new life in the way that they are healthier and happier. My groundbreaking research has enabled me to make advances in science, but to me, most importantly, it gives me the ability to help improve people's health and well-being. I received Australian government recognition as an individual with a distinguished talent in research and academia, the youngest to have ever received the honor. I said all that not to brag, I promise. I said all that because I want to show you that there is a story behind everything, and that even though I received the worst advice and faced doubts, I used it to fuel my dream. I really hope that my, an apple a day becomes known as world's fourth apple, Vincent's apple. So yes, it is an unusual dream. It is strange, it is weird, in this day and age when people want to go to Mars and make robots, this young person on the stage wants to be the world's fourth apple. But it is my dream. So it is important, at least to me. So if I may ask you one question now. What do you want? Think about it. You don't have to think five years, ten years from now. What do you want tomorrow? What do you want now? Some dreams have to be put aside and they remain as hobbies. But some dreams can become your life. I believe that dreams do come true as long as you put in the work, you have to be yourself, you have to work hard and smart for your dreams because it is, not others, it is not other people's job to understand it. It is your job, because it is your dream and it's your journey. So yes, this is not just an apple. This is my apple. This is my dream and this is my story. What's yours? <laughs>